Hi everyone, Alba here. This is my solo walkthrough and guide to the level 11 heroic quest Mad Tea Party on the Elite difficulty. Enjoy. Hi everyone, Warjack here. Before we get started, I'm going to go and pick up a hireling who's got restoration on him. This is just so I can complete one of the optionals in this quest. You can do this with scrolls or wands or whatever, but this is the easiest way for me. Okay. Now, this quest is not actually that long, but if you look at the video, it looks pretty long. That's because I'll be taking my sweet time and showing off absolutely all the options and waiting for all the dialogue, etc. But at the end of this video, I'll be showing basically like a five minute run of how to do it the short way if you don't like this quest and just want to get it over with. Anyways, we're just going to pick it up and step inside. First thing to notice once you step inside, there is a like a dimensional anchor. You can't use like D door or anything to get out of here. So here we step into the party hall. There's a whole bunch of guests. You can chat with all of them. They all say whatever they say and a lot of just random dialogue. Well, check it out if you want. Our two objectives is to talk to the Baroness and to the Baron. Lady Bokter and Baron Volokovich are plotting each other's demise. Can you afford to side with the lesser evil? And if so, can you tell which one that is? Once we talk to them, we can start the quest. Now over here, there's a side room. This room is locked, so you must have open lock or knock to get into it. FYI, it has two collectibles in here are actually very valuable. The heroic version. Runic parchment is great for the constitution shard. Here we've got a guy. You can either attack him you can tell him that you want to leave or you can talk to him. If you talk to him, he will give you a blue key and you will complete one of the objectives. Now this guy later, it will be beside the Baroness. And if you befriend him, he will help you against her. If you kill her now, he won't be there. And if you just leave, he will join forces with the Baroness. This is the point where usually players just go downstairs and cross to the other side, to the other mansion. But I want to keep on with the keys first so this door is locked you can bully your way in or wait until later and it's already open by itself we just got a blue key and i want to show you right away what it does it opens up this door this gentleman is resting impeccably dressed with two coins upon his eyelids while he hasn't drawn a breath in years a spell prevents him from decomposing there's room in this bed for two Okay, in here, this room, there's kind of like a daisy chain of objectives. We're trying to incriminate the Baroness. And so far, we've talked to that one guy, and that's given us one out of three. And the second one's going to be in this room, and will also give us the key to the next room. Chemical paraphernalia on these shelves hammer your senses with a bouquet of pungent, sordid odors. Apparently you can get poison from that table. I'm not sure. This key is the one that will open up the next objective, and this is how we frame the Baroness. The chest is filled with human bones, an adult human skull among them. Carved into its forehead are the words, Traitor to Zarovich Crown, and Rest in Torment. Okay, well now we've got two out of three objectives. I think most players just skip all the stuff and don't do any of these optionals, even though I believe like each optional is like 30% of the base XP. So if you do all the optionals, they stack up a lot. I mean, you get the XP on the spot, but if you don't do it, the base XP of this quest isn't that great. Fine, so the blue key opened up that door. That door gave us a gold key behind the secret door. Who's gonna open up this? A young woman's voice pleads from behind the door. Can little kitty come out to play? She promises she'll be good this time. Really, she will. The young woman hisses as she jumps onto her bed. Little Kitty doesn't know you. 
Little kitty doesn't like your smell. Fine. Now, if you want to find out what's wrong with her, you can talk to her. You need to have wisdom, though. Here, I got myself a wisdom trinket. So, basically, it tells you that you need to use like restoration or actually, I think remove curse and remove disease also work. That's what I went and I got myself a hireling for. Of course, you can use scrolls, but not everybody can cast them. Not everybody's got used a magical device. So, I figured this is like the the easiest way that well that universally basically everybody can do it if you've got a full party you won't be able to do this because you want a room for a hireling but on the other hand i'm pretty sure there'll be somebody in the party who can cast either restoration dispel magic remove curse or remove the disease i believe those are the four options There we go. You need to talk to her. Click the two first options. The evidence and that's is it. That was the day. third and so objective we needed to frame that even the, the Baroness. Would shun her and now we're done known. with it. Okay. Let's go back to the start. We'll get back to this whole floor later. And I don't want to do it out of order. I'm only doing it because I want it to stay on track with the keys. Because it can get confusing. There's a whole bunch of keys. Anyways, here we're back at the beginning. We talked to the Baron and Baroness. And now we're just going to go downstairs. After you do that, you can talk to this guy. He'll open up a secret passage. You can go exploring now. I don't recommend According it. To Lady Leave it for later. Vokter, this secret passage leads straight to the Baron's Manor across the way. Just go on a straight line all the way to the other side. What we have over here is two big mansions connected with this series of tunnels. You only have to just stick to the main path unless it's blocked. These are the light out puzzles. Basically, just step once in every one of them and it'll solve the puzzle. Okay? One, 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 and one. When it's solved, we'll get this like this blue orb in the middle. It'll glow for a second. That's how you know it was completed. This must be the dungeon under the Baron's Manor. It appears he has already taken a couple of prisoners. These two cells are locked. You can use pick lock to get them out, but there's actually keys for them. So I'll show you where you get the keys and use those. If you do not kill these two guards and you let them into the mansion, they will alert everybody else. If you kill them first, so when you walk into the mansion, nobody will suspect you. This is the Baron's side of the mansion. The big long hallway and the big staircase takes you to the second floor. But we'll go through everything. Here you've just got some chit chats you can talk to. Don't do anything. This is the kitchen apparently. Or pantry, whatever. When it comes to the guards on the Baron side, there's the melee guards, who are kind of pushovers, you don't have to worry about them. And then they have the rangers. They also cast this weed, whatever, this spell, and it slows you down and you can probably die just because you get stuck and everybody gangs up on you. So definitely put them as a priority when trying to get rid of monsters, get rid of those rangers. Got a sleeping maid, nothing else in this room. Fine, let's get back into the main hallway. Also, these things are slow traps. The rangers cast them. They're super annoying. A harsh commanding voice issues from down the hall on the left and reverberates throughout the Baron's Manor. Here we go. So basically, once you go up the stairs, you go left, left if you want just to get to the objective. We can either just tell him prepare to die and kill him can ignore him walk away or we can tell him that there's treachery going on and basically send him off to go do some dirty work for you we came to the Baron's side just to kill this guy once you kill him you are gone you can go unless you want him, of course optionals and objectives so he notices that two guards are missing
Here you see that the two prisoners are still here. If you would release them, you'd say, oh, looks like somebody released the prisoners. Now he's going to walk directly into a trap that was supposed to be set for me. Now the Baroness is standing there behind a barrier. We don't get to see her that good right now. Lady Fiona Vachter smiles confidently. Oh, it's a uh, pure as dim as a snuffed candle. Now, I must be off. I have a Baron to poison. I bid you adieu. Please, scream as loud as you like. Fun fact, you can actually get uh, him to kill a whole bunch of devils for you and save you a lot of time but he's not that strong on elite on normal or hard he gets he kills many more devils right, and of course we're going to do all the extra objectives all the optionals now that he's dead everybody's alert to me now everybody's after me for my hit so i've got a lot of trash to kill It's Ekstrasny falls, the flesh of his deformed arm melting away. What a stir this will cause once the news is known. Yeah, the devil's won, so they saved me the effort of killing him. He's a red name, by the way. It can be pretty annoying to try to kill by yourself. As you can see, these rangers, other than just this weed, whatever it's called, they cast. They also cast those slow traps. Those things can really mess you up. That's why I try to prioritize them. Also, as you can see, this quest depends a lot on trash killing, so if you've got somebody who can do lots of good splash DPS, this will go much faster versus somebody whose focus is single target DPS. Okay, at the end of this hallway, we've got just an empty room, there's nothing here. This is a dead end, nothing there either. Everything's really dark, can't see anything. So is this. And more guards. I'd like to point out that this quest was requested by one of the viewers on the channel and I'll be very happy to take further requests from other people. So if you've got anything you would like me to try, any solo run of some kind of quest you'd like to see me do a guide for, please leave a comment. And I have a very small amount of time to designate to these things, so it will take a long time, perhaps, until I get around to it. But I definitely put it on my list of to do or when I'll have time for it, I'll do it. Basically, as soon as I get a spot open where I can do whatever I want, what you request will be on the top of my list so keep that in mind if you got anything any good suggestion of any kind of quest either that you find is necessary to have a guide for or just because you think it's fun please leave a comment fine this room gives us a key there's actually three keys on this side one of them will open up a locked door on this floor and the other two are for the locked cages where those prisoners are downstairs so i believe we got one of the keys for the cages Here we've got this cabinet. This chest is filled with dolls, dozens of them. Each bears an unsettling resemblance to Irina Koyana. 
Yeah, it's really creepy and messed up. The note nailed to the door frame defiantly reads, All is not well. As you read it, you hear an odd noise behind this door. The hum and crackle of lightning, then a stifled gasp. We're gonna go get the key for that. We'll be inside of this room. For a moment, you thought you saw your reflection nod to you. But no, of course it didn't. This needs use magical device. This again is a optional objective. You do not have to do this to complete this quest. Suddenly a woman screams, and then the scream is cut short. Yeah, I should probably rest. Anyway, if you are enjoying this video, please hit like and subscribe. I'd appreciate it very much. I'm spending a lot of time and putting together this project. I have to run this quest multiple times to get it down good and make a good logical route. So if you like it and appreciate it, I'd appreciate it if you show my support. Thank you. We've got a few rooms here are connected to each other. You can come in from both sides. This is the one where we have keys. There's two keys in here. One of them is gonna open up that door that we found locked in the hallway, and the other one is for the cell, for one of the cells downstairs. These rooms don't have any enemies, they just loop back to the main hallway. So that's where we entered, the room with the shrine, and we loop back out. Uh, here's the locked door. Before we heard a scream, so let's find out what that scream was. This clumsily drawn teleportation circle has one glaring flaw. It's in Barovia. One does not freely leave Barovia by any fashion. And here we've got, I believe this is the son of the Baron. Get ready for a fight over here. Uh, he summons a whole bunch of water elementals. So you might want to have cold resistance before you start. I'd like to point out that this quest seems to get a lot of hate for it being, I don't know, long and difficult and not fun and a whole bunch of other things. And the first time I experienced this quest, I also had a similar feeling about it. I ran around probably more than an hour and finished a quest with a whole bunch of open check marks, things I didn't do, and I felt like unaccomplished and it wore me down and it felt unfun. But now that I, you know, that I know what needs to be done and I see you know, I see how you're doing all the different optionals and objectives and I know what they need to focus on. The truth is I don't think it's that bad. I just think that the first experience of running around and getting lost is what really ruins it for people. But now that, uh, now that you're showing all the easy way, I mean basically just what needs to be done and it all starts to make sense, I think it's not that bad after all. Yeah, definitely. I... At the beginning, I was totally lost. I didn't know where to start with this quest. And as soon as I started to do the runs and figure out what needs to be done, it all started to make sense. And honestly, it's really not that hard. Yeah, here we've got these two guys we need to release.
yeah that's it technically speaking we've completed all the side objectives now i've just got a few cultists and devils to kill and then we need to retrain the baroness and the baron if we want to do both objectives And of course, they dispelled all of my buffs. Great. Again, this quest is loaded with trash mobs. And they spawn in big groups and the higher difficulties have more and more of them. This definitely favors full parties or players with good splash DPS. Whoops. Yeah, I accidentally hit Alt Tab and close my window. I'm using tab for select next so I can select my target when I want to aim and I'm using alt to fire my rune arm so hitting both at the same time and go out to the main screen. I'll be honest at the beginning when I was playing this build I was doing it all the time so the fact that it's only once in a while is a great improvement. Yeah, I think I'm gonna leave that in because I generally try to post videos where the actual run, that means since the quest is entered until it's exited is all one cut with no like no edits in the middle. So I think I'm just gonna leave that in. And also, <laughs> oh, I mean, whatever, it's part of the entertainment. I could cut it, but then it looks like a jump cut or something because you do move even though you're not on the main screen. These puzzles can be super confusing once somebody stepped on them. With a little bit of practice though you can figure it out. Here I'm going to get messed up because of my black pudding, this ooze, is stepping on all the lights for me. Please don't play. Ah, there. There we go. Made it. It can be super frustrating. You have a hireling who runs around on it. You can totally mess up all your sequence. If you come and it's just set up, you know, all five are lit up, it's super easy to just step on each one once. Once they mess it up, it's a big problem. Yeah, oh, by the way, I have stone skin, who I usually use when I'm playing by myself. But for videos, I don't use it. Basically, it takes all of your cosmetics and makes them look exactly the same. Well, at least all your cosmetic cloaks. So after spending a lot of time and effort in selecting a cloak that goes together with the armor and looks good, then you put stone skin on it and it looks exactly like everything else you're wearing that's why i don't use it for videos also that's why i don't use hirelings in the video if i don't have to having a hireling run around after you and die looks really stupid and it just doesn't come out cosmetically as good so small touches if i don't have to i don't do it i'm doing just fine so i usually don't put on stone skin but eh, what the heck I think the first time I noticed what stone skin does to your character was I did a solo run basically like a year ago of uh, Reaver's Reach and I was like level 21 or something I was a few levels above and I put on stone skin and basically I didn't take any damage and so for the whole quest all I'm doing is running around with stone skin so you don't get to see my cosmetic at all. I know there's a lot of people who don't care about the cosmetics and for them it's just about how much DPS you do. But I know there's people who do care about it and uh, well I'm trying to make it aesthetically 
as pleasing as possible. Okay, enough about that. These tunnels have mainly devils with some tieflings. Also, we're going to get running into cultists soon. Now, out of the cultists, there's one type who casts Enervation all the time, and he's a real pain. The books on the shelves here have a range of grim and horrifying titles. The perfect collection for someone who consorts with literal devils. This is what opens up the barrier where the we need to pass. So We don't need to do anything else over here. We can go, we can leave. But there's a whole bunch of collectibles and some extra stuff. I gotta say, this quest has loads of collectibles. There's that soul of cruelty, we'll come back to him. Or chaos or whatever he is. There's a way to loop back around, so rather than going and walking back, I'll just show you by entering from the other side. Again, I'd like to point out that everything over here is optional. We're just doing it because we want to get that objective of killing all the devils. So. And getting all the kills and basically showing off the entire quest. This quest is really not that long if you just want to do the short version. Here we've got this hole in the floor, and if you jump down, it will loop us back to where we were before. There we go, there's the soul of cruelty. That was the boss, or sorry, that was the monster that I saw before. I pointed out, basically, now you can see how we've looped around. Also, there's like a hole in the ground over here and there's a shrine. This quest can be kind of long, so it's good they've got a bunch of shrines. I think there's three in total. There's one in each mansion and there's one in the tunnels. So. You can spend a lot of time this quest. Now I've got to wait for this Abishai to reappear so I can kill him, so. I'm going to take a quick nap and of course ask you to subscribe because that's what we do around here. That's what we do when we take a nap. <laughs> Just in time. There we go. Fine, let's get back onto the main track. I hope this makes sense, it's not too confusing. I guess playing it yourself will make more sense versus just watching me play it. But I'm, as I'm trying to say, it's really not that complicated. Here's the whole map. There's the Baron side, there's the tunnel area, and there's the Baroness side.
over here is this pentagram and it can open up a little optional area and basically what you get over there is a few collectibles and also you get to see a very rare monster who I at least do not believe appears anyplace else in DDL and I'm sure somebody in the comment section is going to fix me and tell me exactly where it does but at least I haven't seen it anyplace else so and what it is is what's well we've seen different variants of it if you've played um, the two flagging quests for uh, for legendary shroud you'll know what they are so it's the one it's those blue salads and red salads or whatever they're called salads so it's whatever they are those things and the ones that are casters uh, brown and green i don't know what color they're supposed to be whatever there's three different types and they have a lot of them and there's actually another kind and if you've played the D, D pen and paper you might know what it is already if not you're about to see what it is fine so first we've got to solve this puzzle we can just leave but i'm going to do this optional first Solved. You can follow the beam to see where it goes. This hole in the ground is a bit of a trap, so I don't like fighting all the monsters together at once inside. I'm gonna try to bait him out and see who I can damage without standing inside. There's one red named Summoner in there. And I don't want to have to fight him cramped in this little tiny hole. Some of them only activate when you get really close. Okay. As long as you engage him and like directly are attacking him, he doesn't actually do anything really interesting. It's when he stands back and he spams you with stuff who becomes really annoying. Fine. And here we go. I believe this is called a death salad or whatever it is. I don't know. I'm butchering its name and I don't care. That's it. Now we're back to the Baroness's side. The side where we started from. Okay, first of all, I'm going to go back up to the entrance. A few things have changed. Now, the Baron's two sons are guarding the door. You can either attack them once you beat them down, they'll leave, or you can just tell them, talk to them, and they'll just leave by that. So, it's just as quick, no reason to fight them. And we can enter the red door or go back down to, to the bottom. I'm going to go to the bottom. We'll come up and go through that door at the end. Now I've got the face off against the Baroness and the Baron. And to get into the Baroness's room, we need a jeweled key. It appears on this floor, right over here, once we kill the monsters. Now there are these like archers over here, who cast Enervation after they dispel your magic, so they're super annoying. Probably focus on them first. Hear that one. Got one of them. Second 
Tá bom. As you can see, killing the monsters is what drops the jeweled key. And you don't need anything else from the bottom floor except for this jeweled key. Once you've got it, we can actually go and attack the Baroness. Of course, for the sake of completion, I'm going to clear out all these extra rooms. There's nothing to look for here. It's just purely for the kills. And he dispelled magic, and then he hit me with a negative level. You go looking for trouble, and you'll find it. <laughs> yep, just like barracks or whatever it is. There's nothing really interesting here. Once you've got the key, you can just walk back downstairs and walk up the ramps. If you go through here, you'll have to fight everything. Just a waste of time, but of course we're doing it for the kills. Ah, also, there's another little thing over here in these rooms. At the beginning of this quest, we went and we opened up a secret door, a locked door. And we talked to a guy who gave us a blue key. If you cannot open up that door, you still can get the blue key from here. It's always behind the well. You pick up the blue key and then you can go up to the the floor, the top floor in this mansion and open up the door with the guy who's dead on the bed. And you can start, well, from the second, you can do the second and third objectives over there to frame the Baroness. You still won't get the first one who is talking to the guy. To the good listener. Anyways, we're nearly done. This should be it. And as you can see, we're back to the main entrance hall. Oh, we've cleared everything. Now we're going to go face off against the Baroness. This top floor we've been on before, but we're going to do now all the extra rooms. Here we've got a whole bunch of these summoners. Even more cultists to fight. And of course, as soon as you start attacking them, everybody comes out of the woodworks all over the place. I would make sure I've got restoration on me. Uh, if not, these negative levels will <laughs> suck the life out of you. Yeah, but it's these archer guys. Those are the ones who hit you with the negative levels. Basically, the archers in this quest on both sides are the ones you want to deal with first. Except for the teeth and their push -overs. Nothing really exciting in this room, but it does have a shrine. Don't worry. I'm not going to use it. Twice is enough. 
Here we've already cleared out these rooms. That was a room with the dead guy and the skeletons. This is the room with little kitty who comes out to play. And here we've got the final room with the baronesses. These two rooms are just empty. Side rooms, nothing here. The room right in the center is the one with the Baroness and you need the jeweled key that we got from the bottom floor after killing the monsters that will open this door up and this door cannot be picked. Lady Vokter does a double tag. Oh, you! You made it this far? As you can see, the good listener that we talked to at the beginning is here, and he's helping us. As I mentioned before, you can either kill him at the beginning, or just ignore him, and then he'll be attacking you also. Again, more collectibles. This is the green key that we need to open up the room to the party room where the Baron is still standing and waiting. Did I mention this quest has a lot of collectibles? Yeah, I'm pretty sure you did. Okay, that's it. We got the Baron. Now, we can either fight him, get an extra objective, or we can tell him to just leave. So, we're going to fight him, because we're here to get that 100% all objective. Shame on his pets, though. Joy and pride. It's like they want to make you feel bad for killing them. Yeah, as I mentioned before, I'm going to be showing right now, as soon as we finish, the short version of this quest. The Lady and the Baron lie undone by one another's schemes, and rightly so. But an uneasy sense of doubt creeps over you. What monster or lunatic will come forth to rule Velaki now? This is one of those quests where you end the quest very close to the entrance. That means you can just run back out instead of recalling. Which of course means that I forgot to show the scorecard. Yeah, sorry about that. Okay. Now we're going to do the fast run. This is basically if you want to do it just for flagging, just want to get past this quest, or you just want to get familiar with it. I'm just going to do it on casual because I want to do it as fast as possible. So step number one, you run to the main hall over here. We're going to talk to the Baroness and to the Baron. Order doesn't make any difference. Just chat with them. Yes, yes. Done. Right. Now we're going to head downstairs and we're going to cross over to the Baron's mansion. To get to this way, I have to talk to this guy and he opens up the wall for you. Here you're basically just going to make a direct beeline all the way across to the other side. There we go, ways open. I'm gonna show a little bit a little bit of variance on things you can do in this quest differently. 
It appears he has already taken a couple of prisoners. So here are these two guards. I'm not going to kill them. Instead, I'm going to let them follow me in. And look what happens when I approach this guy over here. He's already active. Anyways, as soon as we kill him, we're done. There's actually nothing else to do that we need to for the purpose of this quest. So we're going to head back. I'm only killing stuff on the way because I don't want to get a dungeon alert. It will slow me down and make it even longer. And just like that, we've completed that side. Here you can see in the tunnels what the Baroness looks like when she stands behind a barrier. That barrier is blocked, and this barrier is blocked. So, we got a chain of barriers we need to open. Like I mentioned before, trash removing and splash DPS is the name of the game. Okay, that should open up the barrier on the right side of the hallway. Here we go straight to the end, we this one. That should open up the one in the main hallway. I'm just making sure they don't run after me onto the puzzle itself and mess it all up for me. Yep, just like that. Part two is done. We've completed the tunnels. And now we just need to get into the get the jeweled key. So going from the bottom, of course, and clear out some of these monsters. The ones we need to focus on are the ones on this floor, because that's where the guys are giving give you the jeweled key. It's one of these monsters over here. We need to kill them, and we'll get the jeweled key. There we go. Got the jeweled key. I'm not going to bother by going up through all the stairs. I'm just going to go back down and walk up the big ramps or stairs whatever they are I don't know what they are yeah staircase walk up the big staircase that's it these two guys this time I'm gonna fight them just for the heck of it they die so fast yeah they leave the same exact thing as you can see this door is open if you do it in that order and here this time just gonna run right to the end of this big hallway and we can use the jeweled key to open up this door. Also, as you can see, her helping hand is over here attacking me this time because I didn't talk to him. That's it, we've got the green key, now we can head down. Here we are, back to the Baron. This time, instead of killing him, I'm just going to tell him the first option is, yeah, he can leave. And that's it. And just like that, we've completed this quest. Five minutes and three seconds. Yeah. So that's it. Short and simple. Usual. If you've benefited from this guide or if you just enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe. I appreciate it very much. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in a different video. Bye.